Beloved in the Lord, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Then he called the crowds to him and said to them, Listen and understand. There is a whole lot to cover in this scripture passage this Sunday, but I have not really gotten past the first sentence yet. Listen and understand, Jesus says. It seems to me that we have a significant deficit of listening in our world right now, and not, not entirely sure why. There are several possibilities. It might be because the world has simply gotten so noisy that our hearing is affected. I can remember what it was like to uh, spend hours on a noisy tractor back on the farm. The drone of the diesel or the pop, 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 pop of the two-cylinder John Deere engine. I remember how after a full day of listening to that, you could still hear it as you laid in bed at night. Probably one of the reasons why I'm wearing these uh, listening devices or hearing devices now contributed to my hearing loss. Too much noise makes you numb to sound, and therefore you get used to it and you become incapable of listening. We do live in a very noisy world, and it has affected our ability to listen. We hear only what we've been hearing all day long. We live in the echo chambers of our own immediate experiences. Our ears have been tuned to only take in certain sources or certain ideas and, and certain concepts, and so we, we tend to block out all the rest. All we hear is what we're used to hearing. The call to listen and understand from Jesus is lost to us. That's one possibility. Or perhaps we have a deficit of listening because of entrenched positions and understandings. You know, I'm struck in this passage by how the disciples asked if Jesus knew that the Pharisees had taken offense to what he'd said, as if Jesus couldn't quite figure that out on his own, sense it from the looks that the Pharisees gave him. How often do we trip landmines with our own comments unintentionally, say something that we, we were not even aware will be taken offensive by someone else until we find out it hurts them. Utter the phrase, for instance, black lives matter and, and watch the reactions you'll get. I do not always know how that phrase will be received in any given audience. Some will, will gladly hear it and, and will find it as an opening to conversations and a way, a way of exploring the, the issues surrounding us these days. Others will hear that and take offense and counter with, well, you know, all lives matter. And once again, once that sense of offense has been tripped, listening and understanding are again just not going to happen. When the when Jesus says of the Pharisees, they are blind guides to the blind, that's not meant so much as a condemnation of the Pharisees as it is a description of the function of what's about to happen. For you see, once opinions are hardened and fully formed, they are very difficult to cut through or to challenge. That's a part of the deficit of listening these days too. The same one that Jesus describes back then, once you start down a road, make up your mind, you're going to end up at that road's inevitable end, the pit, if you will, because a hardened opinion is very difficult to overcome. Listening shuts down. Understanding is not possible without the ability to weigh or to entertain the various sides and nuances of an argument or of a matter, or of a situation. We have a deficit of listening in our world right now for another reason. And that is because, well, we are dismissive. You know, when I think about it, that's the hardest part about reading this gospel lesson. 
recognizing how many times an attitude of dismissal seems to pervade these stories. Jesus, Jesus is dismissive of the offense taken by the Pharisees. They are blind guides to the blind, after all. Jesus also seems to be dismissive of his own disciples. When they ask about the meaning of the parable, he kind of retorts back, are you still without understanding? That sure feels dismissive. The disciples are dismissive of this woman when she first comes and shouts her urgent needs. Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us, they say to Jesus. And Jesus, again, is dismissive of the woman's pleas for her daughter at first. She's not really who he's here for, after all. He says to her, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's a dismissive comment. There is so much apparent dismissal going on here that, well, it's exhausting. We feel that in our bones because we recognize that in our daily life as well. It's exhausting to feel like your concerns are not being heard or our concerns are so often dismissed by those in power or authority our objections to the way things are done are dismissed our inquiries about matters seem to be dismissed more and more from the halls of congress to the latest disputed amazon order were sent the message of dismissal oh let it go elections have consequences it's not that big a deal. Um, you just don't see the bigger picture. I can't get worked up over your issues. Dismissal. Dismissal shuts down listening and, and sends the message that there will be no understanding. It will be my way or the highway. Listen and understand, Jesus says. But it appears that's something with which even Jesus struggles. So where's the good news in all of this? The good news, I think, is found in Jesus' recognition and call for us to listen and to understand even when it is so hard to do and so much is stacked against it. It is still what Jesus urges us to do even and especially, I think, because he finds it hard to do. This is a part of the struggle of the human condition. It's all so true. We are prone to not listen. We're prone to be products of our own echo chambers. We're, we're prone to be narrow-minded. We are, we are prone to be dismissive of others. And yet, the call of Jesus to us is to listen and to understand. That call sits out there both as promise and as possibility. And, and every once in a while, it makes a difference. And listening and understanding do become possible. I, I look at this story again, and I note a shift that takes place in it. The woman did not get her needs met by shouting. Jesus did not get rid of her pleas with his sharp words or dismissive phrases. The Pharisees did not get their offenses noted with their disapproving looks. And the disciples did not change or affect anything with their objections or their comments. The whole story, however, shifts when the woman stops shouting and the disciples stop dismissing and Jesus himself stops pontificating, it all changes when the woman kneels and says, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. It is at that moment in this story that listening and understanding seem possible again as she takes a posture before Jesus of submission and humility and, and Jesus himself is disarmed by that and then softened to hear what she has to say. Engages her. Lord, help me. Which makes me think, Lord, help me. I can be tone deaf to the needs and concerns of this world so often, of my neighbor so often. I can be tone deaf so caught up in listening to what I've heard all day long that I'm unable to listen 
or to understand. So Lord, help me. Lord, help me, I do get caught up in my own echo chamber. Lord, help me, I am too often narrow-minded and hard of heart. Lord, help me, I can be so dismissive of others. The trajectory of the whole passage changes when the knee is taken and the phrase, Lord, help me, is spoken, even for Jesus. I look at the woman kneeling before Jesus and my mind immediately goes to another scene in the Garden of Gethsemane. When Jesus himself will take a, kneel before, a knee before God and, and plead in a similar manner, Lord, take this cup away from me, Jesus says. It's another Lord, help me moment where listening and understanding become possible. Jesus does not get the answer he would like to hear there. What he does get in confronting the difficult is the strength to see the difficult thing through to the end. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Maybe, maybe that's what we should be praying for as well. Not for things to be taken away from us, but the strength to see some very difficult things through to their preferred, or rather to God's preferred end. Thy will be done. Listen and understand, Jesus says today. That's both an invitation and a possibility. But maybe one that we will only find when we stop our shouting and give up our own looks of contempt or disapproval, our own taking offense at things long enough, long enough to inquire of the will of God in these matters. Maybe listening and understanding only comes when we take the knee and pray, Lord, help me. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds now through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.